you want to be thrilled and entertained, there's nothing like a good fight to get your adrenaline pumping. Of course, by this, I mean the stuff you watch in the movies. The TV region would never advocate violence in real life. What I do support, though, are these top 25 fight scenes in the movies. Watching John Wick facing off against Scott Adkins is a dream come true for any martial arts fan out there. After all, this is Yuri freaking Boyka from the Undisputed franchise. One thing is, bro's tapped into his plus size personality here. Either way, the extended fight scene between John Wick and Killer was a sight to behold. It was intertwined with Donnie Yen also doing his thing, but eventually the sequence turned into a fight to the death between the two unrivaled forces. I love how the dancing crowd only reacted when Killer entered the playing field. It was almost as if they've seen him lose it before. It was such a captivating sequence that I barely realised it was around 8 minutes long. There were some pretty slick moves on display, which really begs the question. If Scott can pull off such an amazing display in a fat suit, what if we put him in a bat suit? Well, I guess we'll never know unless James Gunn's watching this video. He got a brief mention in the previous entry and now he's taken all the glory. Donnie Yen is a grade A badass when it comes to the world of martial arts. His fighting skills are exemplary and he's proven his merit time and time again with the plethora of film credits to his name. In this case, we're looking at the prison fight scene from 2014's Kung Fu Killer. It's pretty much what you'd imagine it to be. Donnie works up a bunch of disgruntled inmates and then proceeds to kick their sorry butts without any mercy whatsoever. The moves on display were electrifying. Blow was literally thrashing inmates in front of the jailers and there was nothing they could do about it. Then again, I'm I'm pretty sure those guys have watched Ip Man and figured it's better to just be the audience than the victims. <laughs> The general public may not look back at this film with a lot of fond memories, but if you were to compare it with the newer Star Wars content, then I'm sure The Phantom Menace would look like a straight up masterpiece. The powers of nostalgia and reflection have helped a lot of films receive their dues in the modern age, and this one's no different. The scene in question is the epic duel between Darth Maul and the trusted duo of Qui-Gon Jinn and Obi-Wan Kenobi. By 1999, everyone was used to the idea of a lightsaber, but this battle gave a whole new meaning to that concept. Each of the fighters was completely relentless and things only took a brief pause after Liam Neeson had to exit the battlefield to go save his daughter from Eastern European kidnappers. The silent rage from Obi-Wan kind of gave me goosebumps too. The fact that the only word in this duel is a loud, painful, no, says something, doesn't it? The duel was so intense that there was no time for talking, just fighting. In today's world of Instagram and TikTok, it's easy to forget some of the most memorable moments in film history. The TV region ain't gonna let that happen though, which is why I'm bringing up what most people like to call the Mona Lisa of fight scenes. It's between everyone's favourite Jackie Chan and Benny the Jet Yurkides from 1984's Meals on Wheels. This sequence was such a brilliant piece of choreography that it's still used as a reference point in modern action movies. If you haven't watched the movie, I strongly suggest you check out at least this final battle. I kid you not, Jackie Chan was actually actually so impressed by Benny's skills that they ended up working together even after this film. And why wouldn't he? Bro casually snuffed out a bunch of candles with a kick while he was punching the daylights out of a living legend. And he did all of that while wearing suspenders and a bow tie, so respect. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. 
The MCU enjoyed an unbelievable streak of success during the Infinity Saga, and it all boils down to its three OG boss men, Captain America, Thor, and the legend himself. Iron Man. So when we got to see Thanos take them on in an unbelievable showdown, Jaws just dropped everywhere. While I'm still doubtful about the way he dominates the Trinity, the scene in itself is epic beyond comprehension. If I've got to make a confession, my biggest letdown was when Thor freaking turbocharged Iron Man's blasters, but it still had no effect on the Man Titan, simply because he knew how to spin a sword. However, moments like Steve Rogers lifting Mjolnir were redeemable highlights, which is why the scene still makes it into my list. Man, this truly is what the MCU stood for selfless heroes risking their lives to save humanity. It really breaks my heart that we'll never get to see something of this level ever again on screen. If you're up against Tom Cruise and freaking Superman, you'd normally want to just surrender before anything lethal happens. In the case of Chinese stuntman and wushu champion Liang Yang, it's a whole other story. True, he gets knocked out in one shot by August Walker in the first half of the bathroom fight, but he more than makes up for it in round two. The first choreography was a class apart, and I weirdly enjoyed that weird little shimmy Henry Cavill does with his fists. Bro really put on such a fearsome display, only to be smacked down in less than one business minute. Full credit to Liang here though, because he totally held his own against two megastars and even emerged the victor. Come on, he was totally going to end Ethan if it wasn't for Faust coming in and shooting him first. Yeah, you can be a champion fighter, but it's still mission impossible if you're up against a bullet. Yes, this moment keeps finding its way into my videos, but that's only because it would be a criminal offence if I didn't include it in a list that covers fight scenes. Rama is a pretty badass fighter in his own right, but the assassin is no pushover. The kitchen battle has got to be one of the most iconic fight scenes in action movies, and the participants live up to the reputation. It's true that Rama takes down Hammer Girl and Baseball Batman before this, but none of that matters when you're up against someone as skilled as the assassin. I mean, both men went at it as if they were actually going to end each other, and honestly speaking, Speaking, that's how an encounter should be filmed. The adrenaline rush you get after watching the sequence is so good, I actually took up martial arts classes after I walked out of the cinema. Unfortunately, that only lasts for about two weeks, though. <laughs> Ah, the world's favourite assassin makes another appearance, and it's an even better sequence. The knife fight is easily one of the most well-choreographed battles I've ever seen. The section where it's strictly two versus one fight is so realistically done that it doesn't feel as if you're watching a movie. Apart from the total awesome knife-throwing scenes, John Wick's sluggish movements make sense because he's already injured from before. Also, the whole idea of both fighters going for him at the same time is exactly how it would play out in a realistic situation. Nobody's waiting or prancing around for their turn. Both dudes are giving it their all and Keanu is up to the task. Kudos to him for doing his own stunts here because it adds a lot of respectability to a man who's already Hollywood sweetheart. Yeah, I know how ironic that sounds for a guy who's literally assassinating a whole bunch of people in all of his movies. It 
was only a matter of time until we saw this gem, wasn't it? Watching Iron Man turn to the dark side and hash it out with Captain America and the Winter Soldier was most definitely a treat for action lovers all around the world. Yeah, sure, the context behind the encounter is tragic and all, but just look at these men and their rage. My personal favourite has to be the moment when both Steve and Bucky gang up on Tony Stark for that brief sequence. Whoever choreographed that scene deserves a medal. You know, on one hand, it's impressive to see how well Iron Man was able to take on a couple of super soldiers enhanced with cybernetic weapons, but on the other hand, it's miraculous to see how well two humans were able to disable something that's equivalent to a flying tank equipped with a targeting system and its own AI personality. We're all familiar with boxing, aren't we? Whether it's Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, or even Floyd Mayweather. The sport has a global fan base and churns out millions of dollars just like it's child's play. However, the moment it was etched into pop culture history was the first ever Rocky film, released in 1976. Sure, boxing was a popular sport at the time, but this movie started a movement that motivated even your average Joe to become a professional boxer. The final fight between Rocky Balboa and Apollo Creed is one that they still bring up in film classes, because of how well it's been directed. The battle isn't just about who comes out on top as the winner, there are multiple themes on display here. I swear the film still inspires me to this day. After all, it taught me that everything isn't about winning, but rather getting up even after you've been knocked down. That's exactly what Sylvester Stallone does here. What amazes me is that he wrote the screenplay as well. Bro was working as if his rent was due. They might tell you not to drink and drive, but Jackie Chan sure loves to drink and fight. Drunken Master 2 is a kind of a weird one for me. Honestly speaking, I don't remember much of it apart from the factory fight scene. Yes, the film is supposed to be funny as well, but what happens here is straight up ridiculous. I mean, the man gets dominated in every single manner, but then he drinks some booze and becomes a total champion. Yeah, none of this makes sense to me either, but I still enjoy watching this encounter. The choreography isn't exactly what you'd call brutal, but it's interesting enough to warrant its own audience. Also, we got to see the first live rendition of Floor is Lava Meme before it was even a thing on social media. I swear to God though, if alcohol can bless you with this kind of ability, then everyone would be a drunkard. say that Gon Yen is a staple name in lists like these. His role as Ip Man in itself is more established than the entire careers of most people. In this case, we're looking at the legendary battle between him and Master Hong. What's even better is that they're fighting it out on a freaking round table. This is a whole other level of flexing. And on top of that, neither man backs down or gives a silly excuse like, oh, the table's too slippery. I also love the fact that Ip Man would thank the masters he defeated for going easy on him. It's a boss move which shows his respect for these masters because he doesn't want them to lose face in front of the others. The direction is also on point because you need skilled technicians to cover such an animated sequence. If Keanu Reeves doesn't show up as John Wick, you can bet your bottom dollar that he'll arrive as Neo. The Matrix faced so much success upon release that a sequel was pretty much imminent. However, we had to wait all the way until 2003 for The Matrix Reloaded and it didn't disappoint 
well, at least from the action scenes. The most memorable of them all is Neo's encounter with the Mr. Smith clones. It was an excellently choreographed sequence with Keanu giving it his all against an unlimited supply of Hugo weaving clones. Once again, we can see multiple clones taking on Neo at the same time, rather than waiting in a line to get their butts handed to them. I know that Keanu is the star here, but I want to give props to Hugo as well. He played his part to the T, which is why I was so disappointed not to see him back in Matrix Resurrections. This is a fight that you just have to see with your own eyes. There are a lot of martial arts gems out there and Iron Monkey stands tall as one of the most entertaining stories in Kung Fu films. Actually, I don't even know what kind of style is on display here. The dudes are literally fighting on poles with the entire area on fire. Now, if this isn't badass, then I don't know what is. The speed with which these men attack each other is so rapid that I first thought I was watching it at twice the playback speed. Also, if you didn't spot him already, Donnie Yen is in it too. Although he looks a little different without any hair on his head. I also like the villain's fighting attitude because if you translate whatever he's saying, you'll realize he's handed off some excessively savage insults. Actually, you should go watch the scene for yourself. Just thank me later. Landing just outside my top 10 is the most intense battle in Infinity War. Yes, the battle of Wakanda was pretty badass, but the attack on Titan felt a lot more personal. Anime references aside, it was terrifying to watch Thanos beat down MCU veterans like the Guardians of the Galaxy, Doctor Strange and Iron Man. Yeah, Spidey's there too, but Peter Parker will still be a novice this time round. The highlights here were his encounters against Stephen Strange and Tony Stark because the both of them gave him a pretty good fight. Personally, I loved watching the nano suit utilize its abilities and even land a punch on the Mad Titan, but unfortunately, we already knew the outcome, didn't we? It just goes to show why he's the superior Marvel villain. Why should boys have all the fun? Even the ladies can put on a show if you give them the opportunity, and Michelle Yeoh has been in the industry long enough to know that. Her sword fight against Jen is just as good as anything you'll see between a couple of men, and that's because Ang Lee made sure to make this scene a masterpiece. The sword choreography on display is unbelievable, and frankly speaking, Jen is kind of like a human tornado. That woman spins faster than the freaking Beyblade. On a serious note though, Michelle Yeoh has proven her legend status multiple times, and this scene is the of the crop. The sheer skill and character on display are incredible. You don't need to see anything else of this movie to understand who Yu Shu Lian is. I've praised Raid 2 a lot of times, but I almost forgot that the OG film also has a couple of stunners. One of them is the brutal encounter between Mad Dog and Rama, who teams up with his brother Andy. Man, I don't know what to say. Mad Dog has got to be one of the most dangerous goons in Asian cinema. It took both Rama and Andy putting in their best efforts to match his skills, and they almost ended up on the losing side. Bro actually got faster after getting stabbed in the neck. 
That's final boss material right there. I think the best part is how the scene builds its desperation and intensity. I was feeling so anxious because I really wanted the duo to finish off Mad Dog as soon as possible. That's when you know a villain is very dangerous. Come on, if I could put Henry Cavill and that awful moustache in this video, I was obviously going to include his most iconic role ever. The final battle between Superman and General Zod deserves just as much praise as any other iconic fight. The savage nature of the encounter is best shown in Zod's general attitude, but even Clark didn't hold back his emotions. To see Kal-El having to resort to murder to win his match really struck a chord in my heart, and this proves to be a testament to Michael Shannon's performance. Okay, just to put Zod's abilities into perspective, it took Superman his entire childhood to get used to his heightened senses on Earth. Zod, on the other hand, became accustomed to them in the middle of the fight. Yep, that's how much of a threat he really is. If you want to watch a ridiculous action sequence, look no further than a Quentin Tarantino film, especially if it happens to be Kill Bill. Volume 1 has his most ridiculous fight scene till date. I mean, you can be the master champion of the world, but even then, to defeat 88 crazy goons is something only a superhero is capable of. The bride showed no mercy here, and I don't just mean from a physical point of view. Her words were just as savage as her blows, because just listen to some of the stuff she says. Leave the limbs you've lost, they belong to me now. That's gotta be one of the most badass lines in film history. Also, when she spanks the young dude and tells him to go back to his mother, <laughs> That was sassy AF. Every fight scene in a hallway is an homage to old boy. That's just how it is. I don't make the rules, you know. The Corridor Fight is essentially one of the highlights of Korean cinema because it's made an undeniable impact on pop culture. That too, despite being an R-rated moment. I've showered enough praises on this sequence, so here's a bit of trivia if you don't know. The scene took 17 takes and three days to finish. On top of that, it's actually done all in one continuous shot without any kind of editing. The only piece of CGI here is the knife that gets stabbed into Odesu's back. Also, the game Sifu pays tribute to this sequence in its very first level. Now that's how you know you got a winner. I've shown you Jackie Chan and Donnie Yen, so I obviously had to include Bruce Lee as well. Enter the Dragon was a flawless blockbuster, and there are many reasons for it too. One of them was the fight between Lee and Ohara. It's pretty straightforward in terms of the victor, but there's something more important to consider. This sequence is a good example of how important it is to control your emotions during a fight. Lee is face to face with the man responsible for his sister's death, but he remains disciplined enough to stay focused and in control. Meanwhile, Ohara gets too angry when Lee humiliates him, and he becomes more careless when Lee easily counters his attacks. 
In a way, I guess it all worked out because Lee gets his revenge thanks to O'Hara's recklessness. The Dark Knight will always give it his 100%, but if a mother named Martha's involved, God save your soul. The warehouse fight was the best portrayal of Batman's fighting skills, and I'd even go on to say that it worked better than the titular encounter against Superman. Bruce Wayne never comes unprepared, and you could see it in the way he handled all those goons. Bro even took a couple of bullets to the head, but got back up and went about his business as if it was just no problem at all. <laughs> I wonder where you get headgear like that from. On a serious note though, I've grown much fonder of Batfleck now, and I totally agree that he was done dirty by not getting a solo film to his name. The 1984's police story wasn't a massive theatrical success, but its video rental sales dominated the late 80s. My favourite scene has to be the Moore fight, just because of how elaborate it is. Inspector Kevin faces an uphill task at first, but easily starts to turn the tables once he accepts the fact that the only way out is to kick some butt. I've already spoken enough about punches and kicks, but the biggest takeaway from this scene is when Kevin jumps down through all of those lights and decorations. It was a pretty elaborate display and topped even the moment where our hero runs one of the goons through some stalls with his bike. Yeah, there's a lot happening here. one was just lurking around the corner and it finally pops up at number two. It Man basically established Donnie Yen as a global star and there are multiple scenes from this film that'll take your breath away. Fighting one karate black belt is tough enough as it is, but Bro decided to take on 10 of them just to show that his style is better. I really wonder how much rage that you need to have that you're gonna go all out against 10 men. Speaking of rage, this is actually the only time we see him at full capacity. It Man never shows such brutality again. I guess he's realized it's better to suppress your anger rather than let it out on martial arts experts. If beating 10 karate masters was badass, well here's Bruce Lee defeating an entire dojo of Japanese fighters, including their sensei. I'm not good with counting, but if I had to put a number to it, I'd say there were at least 20 people fighting Bruce Lee in this battle, and he still came out on top. Sure, he used nunchucks for additional damage, but I think you can allow that when the fighters outnumber to such a degree. The best part about this scene is when he forces those bratty students to eat the filthy sign they made earlier. Bro is literally making his enemies eat their words. I guess that's what happens when you challenge the man who revolutionized the world of martial arts. Hope you like this video. Please subscribe to the TV region and here's another video I know you're going to enjoy.